podcast. It's the wrong thing. <laughs> There's a slight delay when I look this way. <laughs> Daily Motor Podcast. We're here in the Daily Motor HQ yeah, Podcast Studio. The yes. office. We were not expecting to be moving, uh, but then yeah. the podcast studio that we recorded in was closed today, so we had to improvise. And, and uh, Charlie and I took up, up uh, interior design mm-hmm. for the day. Yeah, check out our, our very nice art. We, yes. have, we have a lot of class. Glass here. and tires. We've got a Lamborghini Gallardo, mm-hmm. Super Leggera. Yeah, my We're office each. was robbed of uh, a lot of art, but it's okay. Yeah, well, uh, please donate to yeah. to Daily Motor yeah. so that we can get Chris some more. We don't even need the art, we just need the frames. The, the, the That's true, frames I can, I can the, uh, source my own art, but the frames are like four bucks a piece. So. Right. So, if you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. This is where we talk about the cars we drove, the cars we're driving, going to drive, would like to drive, and pretty much anything else that comes up and is relevant. I would like to drive one of those. Yes, a 2006 Ford Fusion, actually, as you can see. <laughs> you might think it's a Focus RS, <laughs> but you're wrong. Actually. Focus Focus Fusion. Fusion. Whoever made that Fusion, poster just nailed best. two nails into the wall. Yes. They have popped it up. <laughs> yeah. It's like an art easel. Didn't yeah. we get glue sticky tack things for a reason? I, I, I offered that to him, but he wanted to use the nails. Because this so. is never going to fall. I mean, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, not wrong. Yeah. Also, we will be improving the audio quality. Not exactly sure how this one's going to turn out today, but we got the old classic uh, Zoom right there, going to record us, and yeah. uh, so we'll just have to be careful not to make too many extra noises like that, um, or else <laughs> it'll all come up on the mic. Because it's in the in the podcast studio, you guys have um, like uh, noise gates, so if you're quiet, your mic turns off. But this is just going to pick up everything. So. Right. Farts and shifts and gluten shifts. Yep. What what shifts are any, any shift. <laughs> right. Exactly. So last week we had the I always forget the cars immediately. We had the BMW M two forty I, but let's wait to talk about that. And first okay. talk about the Lexus ES three hundred H. Yep. Pretty pretty decent car. Yeah, the uh, biggest tragedy of the week was that the Lexus ES300 Hybrid did not have a power adjusting steering column. Charlie was very upset about that, mm-hmm. messaged me multiple times, and is in fact going to interject into my review to talk about it. Already shot it. Already yep. love mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so Chris is just going to have to cut somewhere <laughs> key in his video for me to interrupt and say, uh, Wow, I wish there was a button instead of a lever. Yes. Yeah. A lever. A lever. Lever. A lever. <laughs> Trying to make sure. I wish that was a button instead of a lever. The piston to us. Um, now the worst part, in my opinion, about that car was the F Sport handling package on an ES hybrid. Yeah, it was a little strange that Lexus does offer a, an, an F Sport handling package that yeah. gives you adaptive suspension. Chris told me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure a few other even handling, but probably thinner tires. Thinner side wall tires. It handled excellently, but it doesn't have to. Right. It was it's excellent. It's a hybrid Lexus luxury sedan. It doesn't need yeah. to go around a corner as fast as this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It was a. Um, other than those two things, though, I, I mean, you can option it without the F Sport handling yeah. pack. I would get the ultra luxury. I'd have uh, beige with yes. beige and wood. Yeah. Yes. yes. Lots more wood, more Be- beige. Beige with beige with more some more beige and some aluminum. No, no aluminum. I'd have wood. I, just, I don't want wood. Can you have wood still? You should be able yeah, to. Yeah, you can get wood as long as you get the, at least the luxury trim. I would rather have aluminum. Really? Yeah. I just don't see aluminum as like as comfort oriented. I want driving my ES to feel like I'm sitting in my living room. Mm. Or, or even better, a nicer living room than my own. Does your living room have a lot of wood in it? Yes. More wood than aluminum. Hmm. Yeah. Um, great car though, super quiet. Super quiet, didn't even have a dual pane front glass, but yeah, remarkably quiet. It was, it was very quiet. Didn't get the best fuel economy, but I'm gonna write some of that off to uh, just the winter blend fuel and temperatures. We got 35 MPG on the highway, oh. EPA is 44. Dang, I almost beat you in the um, 240i. Really? Close. Really? Yeah. yeah. In the M24, let me get this straight. That car I measured the 0 to 60 at 3.6 seconds. Legit. And it got 40. No, 30. 33. 33. Oh, 30. Okay, no. Well, 32 points something. That's still good, but for some reason I thought you meant in the 40s. No, no. It's going to be like, that is amazing. No, but EPA is 32, and it, it beat EPA in like 25 degree weather With and snow tires. tires. Yeah. Well, and what a lot of people forget, 
or don't realize is with power also comes efficiency. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, if you're trying to make a powerful engine, you're trying to take a unit of fuel and get the most energy out of it. Right. That also works for efficiency. Right. So that's why the more we're seeing more and more powerful engines these days, but we're also seeing more and more efficient engines because trying to use, trying to get the most to go out of a unit of fuel. <clears throat> The only place I see the biggest misconception is with people always say cold air intakes will increase fuel economy, but they don't. Even though they make the air denser, which in theory should make it more efficient, the car is not making it more efficient though, it's just making it more power. I see. That'd be an interesting test to do something like over the summer or whatever with like a air intake. Well, know, I've noticed I've lost or something. Ever since I put my air intake on it, just mm -hmm. the fuel economy just dove. Hmm. Is that not to do with the fact that you drive it harder to hear those whooshy <laughs> noises from the turbo? No, I did a fuel economy test with it, and it got like 22 on the highway. Hmm. I don't know. You're still never giving me that footage. Oh yeah. I need, <laughs> I need to get this computer and try and upload it into that. Yeah. Um. I when I was in high school, I got a I had a Focus ST. Looks similar to this, honestly, without as much of the body plan. Yeah. Same color. You had that same. gen ST? Sorry, SVT. SVT. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. SVT. Um, and I put an exhaust on it senior year, and I always just drove it so hard because I wanted to hear the exhaust. <laughs> I swear my fuel economy went down just because I, I was. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to well, hear I'm it. Sure all really all good. the other students loved you for that. I'm sure just they did. Well, <laughs> <they> heard <laughs> it every morning and every. My focus with the hole in the exhaust that I use a crowbar and a hammer to make, mrum, 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 it literally crackled, banged, and popped. It was awesome. You yeah. purposely put a crowbar on the exhaust? So crowbar. what happened was an exhaust leak came in the uh, catalytic converter. That mm. tends to happen with Fords. Yeah, and I have tried fixing it with sealer and crap and all that. And eventually I just said, to heck with it, and I took a first a screwdriver and s just pounded it into the hole with a hammer, then pried it open, then went and grabbed a crowbar and took the po pokey into that, into that, took the hammer, pounded it up into the hole, just yanked it around, just wrenched it a bunch of times, then took it out, and I had a finely tuned exhaust. It did sound... Precision. It sounded funny. It, it was so it awesome. Was Right. That was a cool car. If it were a manual, I, I would have bought it from. I would have kept it. I give that car so much credit for just how much abuse it took. Yeah. And literally, <laughs> I would. tech engine, baby. I would be outside of. I'd just be on the road and it'd be wet with my friends, and I just lock or lock the parking brake, and then just floor the throttle and just <laughs> just sit there getting burnt. <laughs> the if you can find a good leader. A, a good beater is hard to find, but it's great. Like, mm -hmm. you keep it. You know, like my, my minivan, $750. Yeah. My E46. Your E46. Thousand bucks. Yeah, just, yeah. It, it, there, there's definitely bad beaters out there. Yeah. But a good beater is, is, yeah. is genuine. Nathan's Focus cost me $450. Yep. Really? Oh, I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. yeah. How much was your SVT Focus? Like, I don't know, five grand or something. I, I didn't grand. buy it. Oh. My dad, it was like a gift. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's probably 3500 or so, maybe. But I bought a Focus for, for 500 it's just, um, it could not withstand the bad Michigan roads around down here. Yeah. It would have been, what I told the guy I sold it to is like, if, if you're using it for a point A to point B car, it'll last forever. But if you're doing anything that involves like consistently driving on horrible roads with huge potholes and all that, then it, it's going to take a lot more work. Yeah. Right. So Lexus ES, I think overall good car. Yeah, I, I had no real complaints. It smelled like old person, and I don't know if that was because of people that had previously driven it. It had some Maybe, because I didn't know it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I had like, it, it's, it's, it's one of those cars where I found the review to be challenging because there's not a lot to talk about. Yeah. So... When cars are really... Neither very good or very bad. That's it's that middle ground that's yeah. kind of tough to do. Yeah, I mean it's it was it's like it was it was a, a, a car. Like, <laughs> well the thing the thing about it is it would be absolutely amazing if it had soft, cushy suspension. But it still was fairly it was still comfortable. Pretty, yeah, yeah. But, but, but not not yeah, like comfortable enough to be like, oh my goodness, this is like yeah, like yeah. noticeably comfortable. And well, I, I would expect a Lexus, especially that one being the hybrid. 
to be noticeably like like air out the bumps more than the competition. Yeah. I agree. I think I'd like to try an ultra luxury model, but yeah. the hybrid powertrain definitely better than the four cylinder we had last year. Yes. So that was good. Yeah. The two the two fifty. And it's the powertrain I would get. What yes. else? I, oh, the new for twenty two is the touch screen. That helps operation a bit. Ten Very large. Point two inches. Wow, that point Wait. two makes a difference. I think oh. you're right. Was it ten point two inches? I think it sounds right. Mm -hmm. And no wireless car player Android Auto, unfortunately. But you do get a disc player. So should you, you want do. to play your discs? Yeah, I, I mentioned that. Really? In the, yes. was, huh. One of the last cars. Fun fact, we might have already mentioned this on the podcast, but what was the last car on the U.S. market to have a cassette player? I think you probably know. Crown Victoria. No. Was it a Lexus? It was. Lexus RX? No. Uh, it's the oh, S the SC. SC convertible. <laughs> that car that you're like weirdly obsessed with. Well, I, 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 love, you get a I V8? Love, yeah, a V8 convertible. They're both four-seater. Kind of unique. Lexus reliability. Yep. Yeah. Top okay. Gear's worst car in the history of oh, the world. They, if they, <laughs> have you noticed that like Jeremy Clarkson did a video like from old old Top Gear back in the 90s where he reviewed, it was a 70s Cadillac and one of those big floaty, floaty ones and he was like this is the worst car in the world. And then they just recently did a Grand Tour episode where they all got three floaty Cadillacs and loved them. They're like, these are so cool. Well, it's like saying it's all that. For entertainment. Well, for yeah, for entertainment and just yeah. kind of at what price point you can get in. Well, that and I think they're. I think as they got older, their perspectives changed about that too. That too, yeah. Um, and the world's kind of ex expectations shift mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. My own, my only complaint with the hybrid powertrain on that was the fact that. And it's probably the same deal with other cars. If you had an EV mode, you as soon as you hit 25 miles an hour, it would cut out. Why not make it 28? So if you're on, say, like a 25 mile an hour street, you could use EV mode the whole time. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I did notice a few uncouth uh, situations where the the powertrain was coming back into gas when it was running on electric only. I don't know if you noticed that at all while you're driving. You just see a little bit of a clunk that. Just kind of got to get used to, I guess. The only so. weird thing I noticed is when you floored it from a dead stop, it would make that like judder. Oh vibrate. yeah, that was weird. I've yeah. never experienced that before. Yeah. yeah. So ES, good car. Other good car this week, BMW M240i, which I'll let you lead off on, Chris, because you bonded with it quite well. Yeah. You had driven that car first out in California. Yeah, we drove that car and the 230i out in California a few months ago, and I wasn't able to get a super solid impression just because we didn't have that much time in them. But after spending four days in the M240i, I came to the conclusion that it is my favorite new BMW. Just the way that it drove was just so fabulous and not... It, it wasn't violent, and of course it wasn't a full M car, so you can't expect it to be that violent, but the way that it drove was just very, very nice and, uh, I don't know, easy, planted, really just overall a nice driver's car and my favorite thing that BMW's come out with in quite a while. I could easily see that being a daily driver for someone who, like, maybe has a pretty intense sports car on the weekends, like yeah. an M3 or something like that. Yeah, totally. Their wife drives an X5, and then rather than daily an M car, they get the M240i. Mm -hmm. It's plenty fast. I mean, mm -hmm. you tested 3.60 to 60. Yeah. Oh, it's blisteringly fast, but not mm -hmm. violent. Still, not yeah. violent. Even though it You goes, don't notice you're doing this. Exactly. Thing. Even though it goes 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, it isn't a violent 3.5 seconds. It just right. whooshes up to speed. Which isn't yeah. that kind of what I told you before you drove it? I was like, yeah, this car, so you'll just smooth. look down and all of a sudden you're yeah. doing 100. Doing 100, yeah. It, yeah. It's definitely my favorite BMW of all time. Probably one of my favorite driving cars yeah. ever. Yeah. Well, the other cool 100%. thing... Not is sold 100% on the looks yet. It looks so neat. That's oh. funny, you were just about to say that. <laughs> because uh, M240i... You didn't love the way it looked when we were in California. No, I did like it. I, you I said am... it looked like a Dodge Challenger. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> I think it looks like a Dodge Viper, not a Challenger. It's uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's it's okay looking. I I I think care more about brilliant. the way that the way that it drives. I do just appreciate it looks different. I look at these rear mm -hmm. tail lights. I mean, it just those kind of swoopy bits, and you're not going to mistake it for anything else on the road right now. You're not, aside from Dodge Challenger, but you know. Oh, God. The interior is, is very similar to the 3 Series. 
But while every BMW interior is pretty yeah, much the same at this point, point, so same. yeah. How much did that cost again? It's only like fifty five, right? So that would you have that or a Mustang GT? That every day of the week. No comparison. The Mustang. I, I would is have just, that too. You are not considering a Mustang over that. There's no way. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> you always talk bad about like what? The Mustang has more character. Okay. I would probably rather have the M240i as a daily. You're right. It's surprisingly, even though it's a smaller car, it has more back seat room than a Mustang. Yeah. Trunk might be a little smaller. And it's faster than a Mustang. In the, real, in the real world. On paper, it's probably... If well, you were at a drag kind of strip, a Mustang, auto, an automatic Mustang is probably faster. Be, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's only about 3.9. 3.9? Yeah, but yeah. after you get to 60. That well, that, yeah, that's 3.9 under the most perfect conditions in the world. Yeah. Nobody's would, ever really got it. would also it. pass you once you were... I like don't know. Well. I don't think it well, would. Well, how much, how much power do those make? They're like, like 460. It's Which is ridiculous for a car that's like 30 some thousand dollars that anyone can just go buy. Have you ever seen a car while drag race with a Mustang? They're never as fast as you would think they... Like, no, because they're not on prepped... But so even like um, on the poles. Yeah, you're right. The Mach 1 all the car driver only tested 4.3. But that's the cool thing about the M240i is you can have snow tires on it. You can have it in any conditions and it'll still run a three and a half second, yeah. zero to 60 time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it just comes down to I mean, the all wheel drive aspect. And, and yeah. for a daily, I could see why lovely. people want that. Also, while, while I'm driving it in the snow, you can put it in Sport Plus, put the traction into Sport, and it allows you to drive like you're in a rally car, but not so hard that you crash. I just realized I totally forgot to tell you about sprint mode. What is sprint mode? Did you, you neglected to share an important feature with me? I did, mode? because our commenters told us about it on a live drive. If you hold down the left paddle, oh, yeah. you get more power. What? There's a sprint mode. That's why he got a 3.6. No, I didn't use sprint mode. You, you can't use it. You can only use it in manual mode. Yeah, which is oh, weird. Which so means you can't use launch control. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's for just adding here. Is Whoa. it like an overboost, like in a Fiesta ST? Yes. Or like um, um, N grid shift? M24. Yes. <laughs> Does it feel like a little like nitrous boost? I don't feel it? any of it. Oh, okay. Oh, look, you can do it on that 340i too. Um. Well, dang. Um, I have to go steal that from the Topher this week and go try that out. Yeah, you might need to. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see if we can find it. Someone had like a a description. Maybe maybe this uh, car buzz. I just thought it was it was nice. It was refreshing to get into a BMW that was actually like I looked forward to driving it mm -hmm. the next day. And I don't know that we've had another BMW. Well, actually, that X5 was pretty good, too. Yeah, an X5 and, and that would be uh, yeah, a pretty good that'd be, a, that'd be a good garage. If you hold left paddle, transmission enters a sprint mode. That, that doesn't actually explain what it does. It just says it goes to the lowest gear. Um, yeah, I figured that would be all that it was. Ah, uh, here, here we go. New sprint mode that puts the car in the ideal gear in all systems when the left pow pow pedal is held, adjusts to their sportiest setting for quick overtaking. Oh, yes, yeah, so maybe it doesn't add any. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. Okay. A lot of cars will do that if you hold the down pedal. All right, well, this one actually pops up and says on the dash sprint mode. Oh. So, you know, faster. Right all right. Faster. Yeah, sprint. Yeah, I don't think I really had any complaints about that car, which is impressive. Yeah. No, um, because the wireless charger fit my phone perfectly. And that's a 12 Max iPhone yes, 12 Max. Yes, with, with a case. Yep. Yeah. And it does have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. This large phone. The Harman Kardon sound system was actually better than the previous ones I've Better tested. than any other BMW I've ever been in. Yeah, like, the only one I can think of that's better is the M5 Bowers Milkins, like, yeah. Diamond Series top dog yeah, sound that, system. I meant to bring that up to you earlier, is when I was on my highway fuel economy test, I couldn't uh, believe how good that sound system was. It was like I was like, "Am I in a? Am I listening to a Harman Kardon right now? Like, right. is this?" Yeah, I I don't know if they if it's something with the two series specifically or if it's just 
uh, the 2022 models. Maybe they maybe, maybe they listened to the Daily Motor sound system that's reviews. That's it. That's and what it they, was. they were like, well, we need to change something. Yeah. Um, w- do you think you'd consider it for Car of the Year? In 2022. You know what's funny is I was already thinking about that. Like, it's going to be a top contender. I already know it. Well, maybe the 2 <laughs> Series as a whole. Because the 230i adds a lot of breadth to that lineup as well. Because yeah. it's cheaper, it's lighter, you have rear-wheel drive. It's also a very good car. And it, yeah, very good. A lot of power. Great. I'm sure it's going to get almost 40 miles per gallon. you got 33 in the M240i on yeah. winters with yeah. winter blend fuel. So... Mm-hmm. That'll, that'll Maybe once they add 40. the convertible models back in, the convertible models, which will have a soft. They'll have. They've always had soft tops, but yep. yeah, yeah. I just, I think the car lacks just the nth degree of character to make it car. <laughs> the same reason that you guys didn't let X four X five win car of the year last year yeah. is the X five was was brilliant. Yeah, but the Civic had a little bit more character to it. But, you know, the M240i does have some character. It's, you show up to a car meet, people are going to be like, oh, that's cool. It's purple. Oh. I did have a uh, big man uh, in an F-150 give me a thumbs down while driving the M240i. <laughs> he literally just drove by Chris and went... Yeah, I think I think he was triggered by the fact that I was a male driving a purple car. Like, I genuinely think that that's what it was. I, I was just, I was setting out, and if you watch the fuel economy test on Daily Motor, you'll see it. I was just, I was merging out of the highway in this... this man in an F-150 pulls up next to me, looks at me, gives me a thumbs down, and then just keeps driving. It wasn't, <laughs> matter, it wasn't matter about the way I was driving. I wasn't doing anything. I was just going... You didn't have miles. your flat brim hat on and your vape clouds coming out of the no, car I just, and well, the I had rap a music on. going? I had a camera on my face, so did, there's that. But. Did the F-150 have a giant NRA flag? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a gray F-150, like bone stock, like... Here's <laughs> EcoBoost? Or is it an older? I never didn't pay attention. It was like a 2016 it's probably 50 boost. Probably. Huh. Well, keep keep, keep your uh, guard up, I guess, if you're driving in 240i's, or especially the Thunder Knight metallic color ones. You know, it's just the uh, fragile masculinity of guys with F-150s. Right. Can't handle it. It's required for them to drive by and be like, I'm better than you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, the other, and on top of all that, you, you and Alyssa and I did a live drive in that car. Approachable. All three of us had fun driving it. Mm-hmm. You know, got comfortable right away, and enough rear seat room that you sat back there for a while, didn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like you know, Nathan complains about rear seats. He does, and you didn't have any complaints. Um, you yeah. even got heat controls, didn't you, back there? It has a yeah. whole climate control panel. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I would say that car has more character than the Civic Si. Yeah, I think so. It's just you I don't, just have to pay for it. You know, we're talking about true. a car that costs twice as much, so it's like. But I mean, yeah. price doesn't matter when it comes to character. No, but I guess yeah. When I was just thinking more like car of the yearish type. Oh, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. But no, you're right. It does. I mean, that engine is so just pleasant to drive. It really is. So, good car. Good job, you know you. Let's get the two thirty I around I mean, as well. Just. And you could go track it too. It would. It would fly at the track. We should. Yeah. We should. We should do that. Mm-hmm. This week. At the Daily Motor HQ, we have a TRD Pro Kiwi Green. Kiwi Green. I don't think that's the actual color, but on the Ford Escape Hybrid, it was called Kiwi Green. Yeah, I think this so one's right? called it's Lime. the color of your hat. Lime it's green. The color it practically of my hat. is. Yeah, it, pretty much. Um, I'll uh, I'll bring up a little a little visual for everyone here. Um, kind of fits the vibe of the car. I took it down to get Jimmy John's an hour ago, and. Uh, Felt like I was saying F you to everyone while I was driving. So especially because the exhaust, it's a V6 4Runner and the exhaust is really something. Nathan, I'll let you if you want to talk about that. Um, Since you like it and I don't. <laughs> it's a, it kind of reminds me of the new Ford Raptor exhaust. Exhaust, It's kind of throaty. Um, yeah. I agree with that. I'm well, sure like it's a bit droney on the highway. I only drove it around here and it was zero to sixty test, but um, it was droning at sixty miles per hour on the way down. Too. Yeah, it's kind of that theme, which means it's exhaust. really gonna drone when we do the fuel economy test. I can't wait. But uh, <laughs> it kind of sounds like a Jeep Wrangler with the muffler cut off. Oh, cut the muffs. It sounds when you're on the inside exact exactly like a Nissan Xterra. Xterra. I've never been in one of those. Yeah, are they both three point five liters? I assume so. Yeah. Does Nissan? When did Nissan stop making that? Like 2012, I think. 
Yeah, a little bit later, I think, but yeah, something like that. Um, oh, no, I don't even know that I've ever sat in one of those. They're kind of neat. Yeah. Funky. It, it even like the way the mechanics sound, they sound exactly the same. I'll uh, go back here. Sec I think the second gen's a little cooler. Oops, I can tell my... Uh... Didn't they always look the same? Yeah, mm -hmm. there were two gens. There's the one that you and I saw that looks like the Pathfinder. And then there's, uh, this one. Okay. Oh, yeah! Oh. Wait. Do they not all look like that? Oh, no, there's the, the silver one up there is the first generation one, right? Mm, no, no, not that one. The one next to it. There's a... That's, the one so there's three the generations, one. then. Mm -mm. Okay, every single well, one on the screen looks exactly the same. This is not a real experience. That is excellent. They should do that. They should. That's wait, exactly wait, what it says. Wait, wait. You said there's two generations. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. First gen. I don't recall them ever. Oh, there you go. There's yeah, one. that's the very first gen. Yeah, this is first gen. Oh, I thought you. That's said like the there one that we one saw one after that. that. Yes. That I was right about what it was, even though currently. I'm... Right. <laughs> um, they were fun inside, though. They had like. Um, I just spelled that wrong. Hideous early two thousands Nissan steering wheel. Yep, there it is. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like the? Uh, I, I don't. I don't like the. No, number. and they sold that steering wheel on the frontier up until last year. They also put it in some Infinities too, which and was a dreadful. God, this yeah. was all rubberized though on the back here, so um, so you just hose it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you didn't have to worry about scratching anything. Who put wood on the inside <laughs> of my steering? <laughs> Perfect for like hauling coke machines and. Yep. Exactly. Everyone Speaking else. of that, Nathan and I sold our Coke machine. We had a, a little, uh, like, what do you call it? Um, 1970s. Yeah, like old style water park Coke style Coke machine. And Nathan and I went to sell it last week, and by gosh, was that thing heavy. Just, we literally left Nathan it. Nathan hooked it up almost by himself. Right. We like, we had to leave it at the the end of some guy's driveway. <laughs> yeah. I, I I have no clue how he got that up there. It, he would have had to get a dolly and have like two other people also kind of like yeah. push because it was a steep driveway and then he's gonna get it in his house. That was his plan. He was gonna put it in his house. Yeah, in his condo. It, it was, was gonna go tight. through the floor. Yeah, I mean, just it's... let it like run constantly and just <laughs> imagine if that if that thing leaked, it probably would crash through the floor, and weaken the wood, <laughs> soften it. <and> then <laughs> yeah, yeah. But either way, it's off our hands. So. <laughs> Not our problem. Imagine yeah. calling the homeowners association about that. Um, I need to file an insurance yeah, claim. You had a 1970s Coke machine and <laughs> fell through the fell floor. Through the floor. Yeah. Um, so Forerunner TRD Pro. I think it'll be fun. It's one of those cars that I like to drive every now and again. I wouldn't buy one. I'd never buy one new. I could see buying an older Forerunner. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to see. I, uh, from first impressions, I feel like I'm not going to be into it. I love the Topher's Forerunner. If you're familiar with the Topher channel, he's got like a, a really, really clean 2006 six Forerunner V8, old man tan. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. So clean, dialed. Tight. Um, very tight. I mean, it feels, literally feels just like this new one that we're driving. Yeah. And I like that. Um, maybe just because it's got a little more style with it being like an older Forerunner, but... Again, when things get cheaper and older, they gain more character. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just don't know if this is going to be. And also maybe because it's, it's not green. That too. Not that bright too. popsicle green. I am going to be curious. I mean, I already know which you'd rather have, so it's not a matter of which you'd rather have. But like, if you can see kind of what I mean about like how you could get a car that's very capable off road, but not have it be a Bronco or a Wrangler. I've 100% yeah. rather have a Bronco than that 4Runner, and I, 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 I guarantee you I'm not going to like it as much as the Bronco. Tune would. in next week to see if Chris <laughs> bonds with the 4Runner. I I'm spending a few hours in the so seat. much rather have a 4Runner than a Bronco. <laughs> really? It's the the bron the new interior. I'm sorry. The I want to breathe the in the ceiling. Room, Nathan. I want to breathe in the room. I don't want driving. to get lung cancer. I don't I want do. cancer twice in my life because for for it's just another. We can just get a hard top. It's a or soft top. Well, the hard top's the one that. All right, so the soft top. Yeah. Here's the thing. It just keeps reminding me of piggy corporate bureaucrats at Ford, like these, like in Ford versus Ferrari. They had all those like stuck up obnoxious people in corporate Ford, and they do things like cheap you out on recalls because they're that cheap. And it just, it, when I see things like that, it just, 
Yeah. It stirs in my mind. See, uh, they do that because they just don't care. 2012 to 2018 Ford Focus with the DCT. Yeah. Yep, and that too. Yeah. Oh, we'll just send it out there anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we can just not change the computer. Oh, there's a the steering the steering goes steering out on the yeah, Taurus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll only just do the last few model years of that instead of recall the other four models. Can you imagine years. how many like lives that that crummy DCT has impacted with people like being in unfortunate situations to where they just no longer have a car. They buy a car that's three four years old. It's supposed to be it's a Ford Focus. It has a legacy of being dependable, and then they get that car with the with the dual clutch, and it's just like. Horrible, and a lot of those people don't understand why it drives the way that it does. And they they did a really really poor job. I don't know if it was just training the salespeople or just integrating it. But I remember in back in my day, you know, working at back Ford in service, my day, back in my day, when I was a service advisor at a Ford dealership, people would come in all the time, and they'd be like, "My car is making this weird clicking sound when it shifts, or it's you know shuddering when it takes off." And every single time, oh well. Mr. or Mrs. Customer, you know, this is a manual transmission that's controlled by a computer. That's why, you know, if you don't take off aggressively enough, it'll shudder because it's riding the clutch. And when you hear it clicking, it's just changing its own gears and, you know, all that stuff. But nobody understood why it was acting the way that it was. And that whole situation kind of mm -hmm. goes back into the whole thing with the Bronco roof of they just, they don't care. They just send shit out. And, and Ford has it. done that and literally the entire their entire existence pretty much, I, was, I don't really think they probably did as much when Henry Ford started it but ever since it's just been these piggy fat moronic <laughs> corporate pig heads on the edge man. <laughs> it it drives me insane if you watch Ford versus Ferrari they capture that image so perfectly the big fat CEO who fat? doesn't care anything other than about money Rather than either making a good car, and Ford makes lots, I own a Ford, and this is why it makes me so mad, because they do things like this, and they just don't care. Yeah. And it, it, it just blows, in that generation of focus, with the freaking um, yeah. HVAC controls, oh, how yeah. the glue oh, yeah. would seize up, and then it would break. Are you saying there's something bad about being fat? Something awful <laughs> fat, fat phobic over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about rich people, so... Um, it, 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 it balances out. Okay, so you can be you can be you can't be fat and rich. No, you can't. <laughs> if you're rich, you have to be skinny. A CEO, particularly. Okay. Yeah. Jim Farley, if you're watching, watch the donuts this year, Nathan. I'm coming after. I'm already mad at you <laughs> because you said Jim Farley that you could bring the Puma to the U.S. Oh well, yeah, he's like, oh, I wish we got the Puma over here in the U.S. You can literally control did he that. Really you are the, that? He, he did. did. He tweeted it. <laughs> You are the CEO of Ford. Bring it over here. <laughs> Screw the really freaking spider infested you... echo sport that you would torture us with. We need to give drive... us the Puma ST. We need to drive an echo sport together. I have never driven an echo sport. Yeah, Nathan, we need to record Nathan's we need, first. Uh... We need to get. We need to record taking Nathan's echo sport. Look at that. Look at look how amazing that is. Wish this Wish came, came to NA and other markets. For God's sakes. What a moron. Why would he, even if he, obviously, you know, it's more complex than him just saying bring it over, but yeah. as the CEO, why would he? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, look at that. Well, you're not actually even seeing the car. Yeah, you're but seeing... There we go. Oh, that's the car. Yeah, what a neat little thing. It's you, so you and saw it for about th two seconds of the entire 15 second clip, but... Have you seen the interiors of those? It's so cool! And they've been making the Puma for years. God, Ford. Look at that. That is fun. It looks like an Echo Sport. Look at that screen. Yeah, but it doesn't drive like an Echo Sport. That's no, fun. right. It looks like a Fiesta, too. New yeah, Fiesta. Fiesta. Look up the Ford Evos real fast. Oh, is that the Chinese one? Yeah, we're gonna go on a whole Ford brand here. Okay. Might be new. That is look, sweet. Look at that. Put a Mustang badge on that and people would believe it. It looks like a Mustang. Look at the interior. It looks like a, what is that? What it's a Ford it? Evos. It's, it, like a, it's like a Mach-E, but... What, Chinese? Yeah. Yep. Looks like a Kia. 
Looks and the good. interior, it's literally a giant screen that goes across the entire front end. Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's, that is a really sharp car. I and then if you look could... up the Ford Equator, it's literally like a Mercedes on the Yeah, it's a, Ford would rather serve communists better oh. cars than its own home country. This looks like a Wagoneer. Yeah. Like a well, Wagoneer. that's its competitor. It's... Does it? Look at the interior. Well, it, or like a GLS too. Yeah, they sell the they sell the Commander. Or wow. Yeah, I know, right? Well, to be fair, in China they care a lot more about interior quality. I don't care. Know. We do too. No, people don't. People just want to get something. And oh, they can sell. Crap. They want to get a lot of car for your money. <laughs> yeah, they want to just like fart in the seats and. Well, then why does why do Mercedes do so well over here? Well, and they can sell cheap stuff, but also sell people. People in the USA that buy Fords don't necessarily care as much about interior as people in China. Well, they couldn't. All they have to do is throw a Lincoln badge on that. It would be amazing. I mean, yeah. Kia is seeing that. They put a beautiful interior in the Telluride, and they're selling like hotcakes. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. And Jeep too. Yeah, but I do. I do. I don't know why Ford doesn't bring some of those products over. I kind of get as much as I don't like it. I get not selling the Fiesta and the Focus here. But yeah, yeah, like the Puma makes no sense to me because SUVs are hot right yeah. now. And that is a cool, funky, it, it speaks it. to the generation. It's cool, yeah. it's funky. You get green cars. Or they should have have it and fat yeah, people can't cool. fit in them, most importantly. Yeah, that's what Nathan's worried about. I'm, I don't How care. How many small cars can we bring over to <laughs> slowing down the population? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what, where, where do we. Oh, yeah, the Forerunner. Forerunner will be neat. I'll, yeah. I'll be curious to get both of both of your thoughts after spending a little more time in it. I, I mean, Nathan's got a point that it's good for crappy roads. Mm -hmm. You could slam potholes and curbs as much as you want on that yeah. thing, and you yeah. literally just it, you won't feel that. Yeah. So is uh, Peggy though for seven hundred dollars? I well, Nathan, yeah. I, we actually did. <laughs> we did break a strut once. By did just you literally just, split in half? Was no. just, <laughs> there was a. <laughs> Such a car guy thing. But at one time there was a, it was, it was a Kia in a parking lot a block away, and I said, Charlie, look at that. It's got a weird badge on it. See that? What, what car is that? And he's looking and doesn't see the pot. <laughs> boom! And immediately we're just like, oh boy. It was the, the entire left front side was just being supported by the spring. So the that when we jacked it up, the, the wheel just started to go because it was just the spring was trying to escape. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen someone put a key, uh, the like um, KDM? Yeah, on the Stinger. On, on, no, it was on a Optima actually. Oh yeah, I've seen that too. Yep, that's what we saw. Nathan was like, "What is that?" I was like, "It's an Optima. Don't get too excited." Those old Optimas are now driven by people that used to drive Altimas. Ah, yes, so I could see that in similar fashion. Oh, right, God. that makes sense. Oh, well, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I didn't care for the Forerunner much initially. Same as the GX. The first time I ever one, I was like, "This is stupid," but it did grow on me a bit after spending time with it. So. Yeah. See, the LX did not grow on me <laughs> after spending time with it. So I'm assuming the Forerunner is not going to either. All right. Find out next week. Give it a chance. The not other car we have this week that's excellent is the Kia Stinger. It's a GT2 top dog, red. <gasps> what color is the interior? Uh, black. Black. black and with lots of silver trim. Mm. Aluminium, perhaps. It's probably plastic. Aluminium. No, I, I think it actually because it's cold to the touch. You touch it, it's like ooh. it could just be like, coated. Yeah, coated. It's probably coated plastic. plastic. It's like coated and still metal. cool. Uh, looking forward to that. It'd be a good car to drift around in the snow. Is it going to snow again? No, but you can find snow if you look hard enough. That's true. Yeah, drift around in the dry then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nathan and I took a Stinger GT2 down to Tail of the Dragon once. Yep. It was a Did bit of a guys? boat to push it around there, but the Skyway, it was great for. Well, the last time I drove Tail of the Dragon was in a 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan GT. What so were sure you doing on Tail of the Dragon <laughs> with a Grand Caravan GT? We were <laughs> Good thing you got the GT model. Yeah, this, I know, right? It's a sporty one. Well, it was an Enterprise rental car. <laughs> I was in so, so you had the shifter thing. up on the dash. <laughs> 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 yeah. we imagine, imagine Peggy on the, the <laughs> on snow tires. Who were you with? I was with uh, my buddy Kyle and okay. um, other friends. From, so you did Hoonan? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll have to show you some of the videos. Um, we should put them on Daily Motor. It's yeah, past the point of. I'm sure that car probably doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But um. 
We took it uh, all the way down to Atlanta. We rented it up here in Michigan. The problem was we were all 19 at the time, uh-huh. and the only car that they'd rent us was this Grand, uh, Grand Caravan GT. Um, and the only thing that was different on the GT was like different bumpers and wheels and whatnot. But no, no, I've driven probably the same same type. It was a Enterprise model car. Was it white? Grand Car. I I think it was silver. Ours had, North. ours had what looked like a bullet hole in the door, but I'm not confirming that. It has the four liter instead of the three point eight. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah, it's it was yeah, quick. Hustles, yeah. Oh, it would it would smoke the it would smoke the tires. We did a big smoky burnout in that hey, thing. Allegedly, Cletus McFarlane um, tried did a challenge where he tried to do like the fastest burnout ever in a rented. No, it wasn't he? He bought it. It was like that generation of the Grand Caravan GT. Would you be able to find the date that you were there? Yeah, probably. All right. All right, we'll <laughs> Do you think there's photos of me? Yeah, we're gonna find out. If it, if it were, was it a weekend or was it a weekday? Oh, God, I don't remember. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go through my Snapchat memories and I can tell you the day I was there because I'll have, have it in my. Um, so on Tale of the Dragon, I've taken my Boxster, which was the first car. It was a wonderful car for the Dragon. I have taken. <clears throat> oh, what did I have down there second? Is it 2019. I think I took my Boxster twice. I did. I did take my Boxster twice down there. And then I, uh, shout out to Ben, my buddy Ben, he had a Honda Fit that he, he kept up with me around the Tail of the Dragon in my Boxster S, but it was because he grew up on the Tail of the Dragon and knew like every corner, so huh. he could just perfectly get yeah, around. The Honda Fit. Fit is just all the car you ever need. I know, it's a great car. It's such he a sold it, I'm sure car. he regrets. It was a manual second gen It was Fit. a manual? Yeah. He had Wait, a really. Oh. Was it orange? No, it was red. Charlie. Or. I think I saw the date. For you, you said Ben, right? Yeah. Yeah. March fifteenth, two thousand eighteen, was the day we were there. The O three. If you pull up the van, I'm gonna die. It was a white uh, Grand Caravan. What year? Uh, March fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. Let's see what we get. And you know what time of the day you would have been through there? Yeah, I can give you time. Okay, because that that'll help help us. Uh, we were driving at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Okay. Um, Actually, I don't know if this was dra- tail dragging yet. <clears throat> I just realized these are dates. Oh, sorry. Three. It was 3:45 um, p.m. You said March 15th. March 15th. Yeah. Oh no, they might not have. They didn't have someone out there that day. No, because that was a Thursday, and they don't always do Thursdays. Let me see. I swear I saw a photographer out there. While we were out yeah, there. this is just one of the. Um, one of the companies. It could have been, uh, could have been the other company. <laughs> March. Yeah, it's not coming up for. Um, oh no. Yeah. Sad. Someone took a uh, frontier. Our new. Um, so I sent a photo of that Honda Odyssey that we have in the shop right now mm-hmm. to my buddies, and in the background you can see our new poster, and he zoomed in on it, and he's like, "What is this? <laughs> what is that?" <laughs> hey, sex matters. <clears throat> Let's try the other one. Click here to view the image. Again. The Grom would be perfect for, for Tale of the, the Dragon. Oh, yeah. We should go out there with um, a few vehicles. We could do one of our challenges down there. Ima- could. Imagine doing the Overland Challenge and where we have like a navigator, an old navigator that we take. I'm buying that blue navigator. And oh, out. here we go. March 15th. That's all they have. Oh, wait, no, cars and trucks. Uh, sport bikes. 1,400 photos. You said 1 p.m.? Uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. This is what the people need to see. Yeah, maybe, yeah, let them, let them load up here, because it could have been, I mean, we, we, we spent a lot of time messing around on the road, so it could have been anywhere probably between 2 and 4. We'll let our uh, wonderful internet um, bring these bring these thumbs up. Oh God! I distinctly remember after we did the run, we had a bottle of water and we threw it on the brakes, and it was just. <laughs> there we go. Now they're coming. Oh my gosh! Wait, wait go up! Go, go up! Wait, go, go up. up! Is that a van? Yeah, that's a van. No, that's not a van. Look the way the door is. Oh wait! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that good. girl in the freaking. Go back. <laughs> look at some. Either of those. Click on it. And look at the girl in the... 
<laughs> She's so happy to be there. She's like, get me out, I'm gonna throw up. Yukon. Ooh, nice 718. Oh, look at that. Ooh, beautiful Dotson. This focus's transmission was on its last leg. Yeah, it was definitely that overheating explore. up there. Is this you? No, it was a white van. Uh, Someone else had a van. Yeah, That's not what's on. It's funny. So, oh, wait, go, go back. Go. Was there a white van? <laughs> Oh, it's it's a a man, or whatever. Integra. Trailblazers. Tahoe, Taurus, anyone, Tundra. Anyone listening right now is like, ooh, someone on an LC500. Nice. Lovely. Equinox. Uh, well, Volvo 850R. Yeah. A Yukon. There we are! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Look at you go! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the front. That wasn't me. That was my buddy Kyle driving with his hand out the window. Very nice. So yep. we transfer the van. Right there. <laughs> Someone else? Oh yeah, they had to roll down windows. Yeah, I don't know who was sitting. Yeah, that's my buddy Kyle there and driving. <laughs> there might be uh, might be another little bit here. That's hilarious. Because they have a few different corners that they shoot from. Yeah. Did you guys come back? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't think so. That's probably it. But yeah, there we are. Cool. Well, there you you're go. famous. Uh, I wasn't lying. Yep. I'm doing that. Yep. So proving it. Yeah. Let's switch back. That's here. hilarious. Thirty minutes later. <laughs> right. Whoever's listening has tuned off by now. Oh, and I forgot to. Uh, They're going back to pop rising. I hadn't switched the screen over either, so no one's gonna be able to see that. Oh well. Rip. I'm <laughs> just gonna be able to see it from here. Whatever, today's a low oh, production value uh, yeah. podcast episode, you know, growing, growing pains. A lot of uh, yeah. sounds of the Lamborghini Superleggera. Yep. Uh, Stinger, yeah, Stinger should be fun. We're going to yeah. like drive it, so that'll be neat. We'll see if we uh, find anything else about it. Yeah. Probably a car that's not too much longer for this world. Kia, oh, no, it's, it's not. Yeah, they it's have, not official. Uh, they haven't no. officially killed it, but there's been a lot of rumors. Well, yeah, and also my, my source at the Kia dealership has... Uh, Kind of really it's not 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 confirmed. That. Same as same as what you said that there's right. been rumors of it. So. They're not throwing a lot of support behind it, unfortunately. No. Yeah, but it'll be a great used car buy in like ten years. Yep. And that's how you build a. They'll real... all be expensive still though. Yeah, but there will be a dip. I yeah, I don't think they'll be that expensive. It'll it'll, it'll, be, it'll be like it'll be like uh, think about like '90s Integras right now. Like they went down. Oh yeah, those like under back up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or S2000s or anything. There was an know? Integra that just sold for. Over a hundred thousand on a trailer. Yeah, but I'm sure yeah, that was a really, perfectly clean yeah. type, you know, type like twelve thousand miles or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else going on in the car world? Mm. Ford shut down its plants. Oh yeah, for supply chain issues. Yep. Um, I still would like to own a Tesla. I still miss my Tesla. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I saw a Lincoln Mark LT out on my. Fuel I saw that. Yes, yeah. those are those are good. Pretty rare truck. Uh, Nathan and I saw an Acura ZDX a few weeks ago. Wow! I always like think about buying a lottery ticket when I see one of those because <laughs> they're so rare. Yeah, yeah. Got photos. I've seen two within the last few months because I sent you a photo of one. Of them. Yeah, those sat around on lots for so long. I remember when did they stop making those? Yeah, I don't know. Eleven maybe. Twenty twelve. I remember being a freshman in my dorm room in college, so that would have been two thousand sixteen. Looking up ZDXs because I had a buddy that was a big Acura enthusiast, uh -huh. and there were still brand new ZDXs on the lot like three years later yeah, after they had already been that. discontinued. Hmm. So neat. Anything else uh, going on we should mention? I can't think of it. Uh, I got a lot of snow here. Nathan and I tooled around on the mopeds. <laughs> that was fun. And I, you, I, I crashed. Is there still a. Uh, you crash? completely. Which one did you us? crash? The Tau Tau. Okay. Do I still have like a uh, red. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, it was snowy, but I just totally it skidded right out. And well, then you hit like one of those drain things. Yeah, it was in the middle of our, our complex. There's a big drain uh, cover. Oh, yeah. And I hit one, and it up and it unsettled the bike, and it just yeah. Mm -hmm. Nathan, cooking, are too. you upset that your brother crashed your your tow tow? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think you'd have to you'd be hard pressed to even find like a scrape because it was all smelly. Yeah, I, 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 I would. Slid. Yeah. I one time um, I have you crashed it before. Oh, well, I've, I've done so much shit with that thing. Um, 
you went at 100 miles an hour in one of the snowbanks. <laughs> oh, <well>, literally. <laughs> I thought you were going to jump one of them because one was kind of hard packed. I'm like, wait, 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 it's hard. Because I was trying to like slowly get up it. And you just went, <laughs> I was just full throttle from one side of our. Uh, our area right over to the to the other in the tow tow yeah no in the in the rockets oh, we rockets. did both of them but um, I was close to getting up and over one of them because it was like getting packed uh -huh. up but then the Xfinity truck came and was blocking me so I could no longer oh, keep I'm surprised it wasn't a leaf guard truck yeah yeah those guys are calling out a bit probably because there's no leaves to guard one <laughs> one time I was on like gravel with the moped and it was in a parking lot I went to get back on it and I was like by a curb where there was gravel, and I sat on it, kind of like like this, on the seat, and the side of the center stand sunk down, so the whole thing tipped, and I wasn't able to get my legs over quick enough to ride it, mm. and I fell, I, I felt, yeah, the moped and me fell onto the curb, uh, like the corner of it. Uh, Chris, do you think you are going to do any motorcycling this summer? No, but I would tell you what I would like, mm. a Super 73 electric bicycle. A Super 73. Have you, you guys have never heard of the 73s? I have not. No. They're so cool. My my family in Chicago has a couple of them and we always ride them around the city. They're a couple grand. They're a little bit pricey. I think most good e-bikes are. Oh yeah. And they look sweet too. They look oh, like old yeah, motorcycles. Like... Not that one. Not that one? No. The one on the left there. The, the one that's like 3k. Yeah, that one. Super. So, for those of you listening, it's it yeah, kinda, isn't it's, it badass? Yeah, it almost looks like a like a Honda Ruckus mixed with a fat tire bike. Yeah, yeah, so much fun. They go like twenty five. If well, they they might go a little bit faster. What's the range? Twenty miles or so. I've never had one die on me, and I've ridden them around for like three hours straight. Oh, they have so. pedals. Yeah, you can pedal it. Yeah, I mean you don't have to. So it's a hybrid. Can. It's a hybrid. Ah. Leg human and, electric hybrid. Yeah, it's exactly. You know who else makes one of those? They're hard to get though, they always sell out. I bet I bet that one's sold out. If that ever goes through, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ducati makes one of those? Yeah. Ducati makes an e-bike. Mm-hmm. I saw one this weekend. A there, bicycle, uh, like a pedal bike? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Is it more than the 73? Probably. I and mean, it's a Ducati. Oh wow. Oh, and you just look like a tool riding that thing too. Yeah, as with most Ducatis. Yeah, no way. The TK01RR, I think, is the. Uh... Imagine going on a first date or something like I ride a Ducati. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, and for, with the right person, that would be uh, they, that would be their thing. <laughs> Imagine you're a funeral director and you pull up in a Ducati e-bike. <laughs> Uh, where is the price? Uh, uh, $8,000. Okay, Jeez! You could, have, you could have three Super 73s. So you, how many Tau Tau's could you buy? Mopeds. <laughs> uh, quite, quite a lot. Uh, 8000 You could have an E30, well, not anymore. You, 8, a couple of years ago, you could have had an E36 M3 for that price. You could have 10.6 Tau Tau mopeds for the price of one of those Ducati e-bikes. What do you do with 0. .6 of a Tau Tau? <laughs> <laughs> parts. Parts. Spare parts. That's Spare right. parts. I mean, I'm sure this thing is is just absolutely bonkers. The suspension. I mean, look at this huge oh, oh, this, uh, shock right there in a very weird spot too. Yeah. And you got the e-bike. It's a weird spot for a shock. Really? I've never seen one right there. Yeah, I've seen lots of bikes. I should show that to my neighbor. He's a mountain biking enthusiast. Enthusiast. Yeah. He loves yeah. it. He has a bike that's like ten grand. It was. It's like some crazy like Fox Active Shock. Like, sure. That makes totally sense. insane mountain bike. Did he make his brake pedal or brake handlebar brake thing? Uh, carbon fiber. Probably, I don't know. He's did he make his ass carbon fiber to make <laughs> himself light? <laughs> it always cracks me up when when recreational bicyclists try to make their bike as light as possible because the whole thing is you're trying to work out, right? You're, I mean, ultimately, yeah, some people are trying to do hard trails and go fast, yeah. but like for your your general bicyclist. The goal is to exercise. Mm -hmm. So why are you trying to make less exercise? You're saying you should make like a, a cast iron bicycle. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, it's, 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 you can ride one of those around. You'll be fit. I think the light bicycle is kind of the same. You know, like the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Yeah, it's kind of like the same concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they should come with carbon fiber bikes. They should. They there. really should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Preloaded with sunglasses. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because I because I don't don't have that image issue. I do ride with a weighted bicycle. Mm -hmm. It's more important to me. Yeah. Yep. I would guarantee you, if they if those types of people could, they would make their ears carbon fiber. Yeah, lighter. To be lighter. Yeah, get the air, get the wind Lower resistance perfect, you know, perfect mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. They just have Star Trek ears that point it out backwards. Right. Neat. Well, we will be back next week with a few other cars. One TVD and the other. Do you remember what we're getting from Drive Shop next week? Uh, I don't. I guess I can check, but it'll I'll just check. be a surprise. I'll check. All right, we'll but check. I won't reveal it. Ah, well, you can reveal I'll it. I'll reveal it. Um, so tune in to hear what uh, if, if Chris got wooed by the Forerunner, and if Charlie and it Nathan is a the stinger. Drum roll, please. Jetta GLI. Oh Wait. yeah, the Autobahn GLI. Oh yeah, it's a Jetta GLI. Oh, it's a GLI. I thought that was a diesel for a minute. You know, it would it will be good to have a GLI in because is a lot of people a, asked us to compare that with the Civic SI. Is it a manual? Yeah. Mm, you're the one on the site, aren't you? Or are you looking at the schedule? Really schedule? Oh, okay. I have driven the manual one, and the rev hang is horrible. Right. Exactly. And the gears are very long. Yeah. Yeah. So but was that one an automatic? We don't know. Oh, it's fine. Probably. Probably. That'll be, that'll I feel like an automatic one of those would be very good. It'll be better than me. <laughs> right. Unfortunately. Neat. Neat. Well, thank you all so much for watching and putting up with uh, what what may be it, uh, questionable sound quality, especially compared to previous episodes. But don't worry, we'll get there. Keep supporting, and, and we'll see if we can get some individual mics for the three of us. But other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Drive safe, everybody. Mm -hmm.